are visiting room 10 to see an exhibit on courtesy. May I present Mrs. Anderson and her son Bill, who is in the class. They too have come to watch to see if the people actually display courtesy. Watch how Pete and Marion act as host and hostess. They know that courtesy means showing respect, thinking of the other person, real friendliness. When Pete mentions the neat job Bill did on the exhibit, Bill is pleased. That's courtesy at work. You can see, too, that everyone in the class must have done a great deal of thinking about courtesy and much work to prepare these posters and the rest of the exhibit. Bill is especially proud of his part in the exhibit. The artwork on this large poster, ways to show that we are thinking of other people. We help to make our meetings with other people courteous by using such words as please. Whenever we ask for anything, it shows our friendliness and courtesy if we ask with please. On the other hand, thank you is a simple way to repay those who do things for you. Another expression we need all the time is excuse me. It lets other people know that you are thinking of them when you say excuse me. Still, another way to smooth your meetings with other people is may I. If you must interrupt, two words will show that you mean well. Simply may I? Notice how pleasant and thoughtful Mrs. Anderson is as she expresses interest in Bill's ideas on the poster. Bill graciously shares the credit with his classmates. It was a joint project, he explains, during their study of courtesy. While Pete and Marion posed, Bill sketched the action. Please? With that sketch finished, ready for final artwork, Pete got ready to play the guest for the next pose. Marion was the hostess, offering him a cookie. Thank you. Pete showed that he appreciated her kindness. For the next demonstration, they needed another chair to make a sofa, and they needed a telephone. Joan played the other girl in conversation with Marion. Marion had to interrupt to answer the phone. Please excuse me. She was pleasant and courteous as she excused herself. In the next pose, Marion had something important to say or else she wouldn't have interrupted. May I? Marion is considerate of her friends. Besides these examples of courtesy, there are others. For instance, Mrs. Anderson's way of constructive suggestion. And notice how Bill begins his reply. It's really quite good, Bill. But don't you think these courteous ways can be used in more than just these four situations? Oh, yes, you're right, Mother. That's why we put the captions on the poster. We need them all the time. Yes, we do need these simple expressions all the time to show that we are thinking of the other person. On the table is a scrapbook, especially prepared for the exhibit. It also showed consideration of the other person. The exact form of an invitation letter may vary, but this is an example. Dear parents, an exhibit of our school work and courtesy will be held in room 10 of the Sunnyside School on May 29th, from 7.30 to 9 p.m. We hope you can come. Your friends, the class of room 10. Notice the details about place, date, and time, as well as a few words of cordial invitation. This type of invitation needs no acceptance, but the class prepared an example of one for their scrapbook. Dear friends, we thank you very much for the invitation to your exhibit in room 10 of the Sunnyside School on May 29, from 7.30 to 9 p.m. We shall be pleased to see your work on courtesy. Sincerely yours, your parents. A letter of acceptance shows all the same details to be sure they are correct. There is also a sample letter of regret stating why the person could not accept. On the next few pages of the scrapbook are drawings and poems Pete had made about courtesy when using the telephone. 
Answer promptly. Don't keep the other person waiting. Friendliness is one of the main parts of courtesy. It saves time and makes your conversation more pleasant if you speak distinctly. It's courteous to be brief. Someone else may want to use the telephone. So much for the scrapbook. Over here is a poster that another student made. Be a good listener. It pleases the speaker to know you are really interested in him. And then, too, you can learn much by listening carefully. Mrs. Anderson is being a good listener now, isn't she? And then there's the matter of introductions. How will Bill introduce his mother and his teacher? Mother, may I present Miss Barton, our teacher? See how Bill shows respect to his mother by mentioning her first. Because she is the older woman, he presents Miss Barton to her. And he helps their conversation get started by explaining who Miss Barton is. It's so nice to meet you, Mrs. Anderson. Bill has told me how much he enjoys your class. He's learned so much about courtesy. How did you teach him to make such a polite introduction? Perhaps Bill should explain that, Mrs. Anderson. Well, in our practice in class, we learned that introducing people was just a matter of showing respect. Marion, I'd like to introduce my friend Pete. Bill mentioned the girl's name first and showed respect by presenting the boy to her. You can mention either name first with two boys of the same age. Bill, this is Pete. Pete Dalton, Bill Anderson. How do you do, Bill? Hello, Pete. So the poster that grew out of this practice is included in the exhibit. And that's how the class learned that introductions are really easy. Just remember to show respect. Besides showing respect, your introductions can help the conversation to begin. Notice how Bill's mother introduces her friends, Mr. and Mrs. Hall. Mrs. Hall, this is Miss Barton, the teacher in this room. Mrs. Hall is Joan Hall's mother. Miss Barton, as hostess, offers her hand. Next, Mr. Hall is presented to Miss Barton. And finally, Bill is presented to Mr. and Mrs. Hall. Remember the order? There's a technique to shaking hands. No one likes to have his hand crushed by a bear, nor to clasp one like this, sometimes referred to as dead fish. And so the introductions have been completed, and the group settles down to friendly conversation. Well, it's time to go now. What have you seen here? That is, what have you seen besides the posters and scrapbooks of the exhibit? As you watch the host and hostess, their pleasant manner standing at the door to thank their guests for coming, as you see the guests reply graciously, you realize that it's the simple things, being friendly, thinking of the other person, and showing respect that make up everyday courtesy. Real living courtesy has made the evening a pleasure and a success.